So let's talk about laws. And we're going to deal with this at quite a high level, but we're going to sort of give it enough detail for you to answer um, fairly in-depth questions that you might get asked uh, around laws and computer science. And the first thing that we're going to cover is this thing called the Data Protection Act. And that's the one that came into force in 2018. This law, like all the other laws we'll cover in this uh, video, are UK laws. And that's kind of important to say when you start thinking about how the internet works. I mean, you cannot use these laws in different countries. They might have something similar, but you definitely can't use this one. All right, so what is the Data Protection Act all about? It's all about protecting customer data. So if you think about whatever social media app that you might be using, it might be uh, TikTok or Instagram, or any user accounts you've signed up to online, you will have been given a heck of a lot of data and information to, about yourself um, to that company. And that's fine, you know, we've got a separate video all dealing with privacy issues and things like that, we'll talk about that. But if, the, um, if those companies are asking for that data, it is their responsibility to keep it secure. And you can have a look at the video, which is all about identifying and preventing vulnerabilities um, for more information about how you would get that done. But there's things like, you know, firewalls and making sure you've got anti-malware running on the same computers um, as the ones which are storing your data. There's all sorts of tricks that you can pull uh, to try and keep your data secure. If you do not do that, if you do not keep your data secure after you've asked for it and you've collected it, then um, if someone comes along and steals it, then that company can then be prosecuted and it can be pretty harsh. So as a company, you might get fined about either up to 17 million pounds Pounds, or if that's not enough, 4% of your uh, global annual turnover, which if you imagine if you're Google and you've got billions and billions of pounds, that is quite a lot. So the UK takes this seriously. They take um, protecting customer data very seriously and they all do that under this law called the Data Protection Act, okay? All right, so let's move on to a different one. We've got the Computer Misuse Act. So Data Protection Act is all about um, protecting customer data. Computer Misuse Act is all about, well, as it sounds, uh, what happens if you misuse computers. So if you decide to try and gain access to a network or a computer that you should not have access to, um, then you are hacking and then you can be pro prosecuted personally under the Computer Misuse Act. And there's just a couple of things I want to touch on now. When I say prosecuted, it means that the country um, or it means that the country can take you to court basically and that can result in uh, fines and it obviously can result in imprisonment in the case of the Computer Misuse Act. Another thing just to touch on these, you tend to always put date after you give the name of a law just because there can be different versions of the same name. It's important to know which one we're referring to. Um, so okay, so Computer Misuse Act, all about hacking and authorised access. Uh, also about creation of malware. So if you go and you create malware, uh, so things like viruses, um, and then you distribute those, viruses, then yes, you can be prosecuted under the Computer Misuse Act. But if you create malware and then somebody else distributes them, you can still be prosecuted under the Computer Misuse Act. So that's what Computer Misuse Act is all about. Hacking, creation of malware, stuff like that. You individually will be responsible should you get prosecuted under that. You can end up with an interesting situation where if somebody in the UK hacks into a company and steals loads of data, the person who does the hacking um, will be a prosecuted under the Computer Misuse Act, but quite often the person who is hacked will also be produced prosecuted under the Data Protection Act because they have not kept their data secure. So the hacker's in trouble and the person who has got hacked is also in trouble. Okay, last one we're going to cover is the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. So that one has been around a while, since 1988. And this is all about protecting creative works. Now, you might ask, and it's a very good question, what is a creative work? Is anything that requires creativity? Uh, to make and it's deliberately sort of vague but let me give you some examples and then it will sort of become kind of obvious what we're talking about music that is a creative work it requires creativity somebody to create that work and make it sound appealing to somebody um artists so uh, any sort of uh, art that might be out there and that ranges from you know your sort of art in an art gallery to the cover of a computer game for example that's all artistry talk about computer games yeah games they are definitely creative works that doesn't have to be done by an individual it can be done by teams books that's definitely they are creative works these are all examples of creative works and what you are not allowed to do under the copyright designs and patents act is to take somebody's work 
copy it and then pass it off as your own. If you are then try to do uh, pass off your own and sell it, well, that's even worse. And in both those cases, you can be taken to court and really the fine I believe is limitless. So any creative works, the copyright belongs to the person who's created that work or the team that has created that work or the company that has created that work and you're not allowed to copy and pass it off as your own. So they're the three laws that you really need to be aware of. Data Protection Act, all about protecting customer data. Computer Misuse Act, all about prosecuting hackers. Um, and then Copyright Designs and Patents Act, that is all about protecting creative works. If you remember them and you remember these broad points, then you should be able to answer questions about laws that affect computer science. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.